So this is another in the series. First reads where I just read a poem by a poet I don't know or I know very little of, and I do a first reading just for the sheer joy of reading it, so I don't read it like an academic with an eye to understanding the meaning, to explain it to somebody else, and I might read this totally differently if I come back to it. So today I'm going to start with one by Callie Ingram. This is in the journal Dream Pop. The address is up here at the top. Emergent Occasion 9, Keep Venom. So I'm uh, looking at this one. It's uh, it's a basically a cutout, but it's done in this kind of neat way where the original text is just pushed into the background a little bit. So you can faintly see it. And the other words are taken up. You know, usually in the old days you might have used whiteout or something to do this, or a pen to scratch out the, the words. This is being pulled out. This reminds me actually of uh, a technique I've seen Jenny Bully, the poet, uh, use before. Now, this one, uh, it's definitely, you know, free verse. I always look at the form when I look at something, but this makes it fairly easy to look at. So I'm going to read it Keep Venom. It almost has like a title here Keep Venom. Still busy, still pretending to endure. But the brain, the liver, the heart are weaker. Is this they are weaker because of the venom from the beginning or keep that venom going? And in that keeping it going, it's going to make the brain, liver, and the heart weaker. This obligation to look first to ourselves is another misery. That's an interesting you know, line here that looking to ourselves for it's another misery because of the, is it because of the venom or what has happened? A familiar operation under pestilential conditions. So something you do over and over and it's in this pestilent situation or condition of doing it because of the venom that we have in the beginning. Right after this, it's written in a more traditional format. And I don't, I don't really know if this is a intended to be the format or the one above where they're supposed to go with each other. So still busy, still pretending to endure with the brain and liver and heart are weaker. This obligation to look first to ourselves is another misery, familiar operation under pestilential conditions. That's The second one reads really quite differently than the first one. Um, I much prefer the first spread out on the page, that sense of um, like when you spread it out on the page, you're getting this sense of thoughtfulness, of questioning as you go through it, keep venom, still busy, still pretending to, and your reader has to literally skip down into her butt, the brain and liver and heart. Right? It makes you stop and go with the flow of this. Um, you can barely read what's behind it. So I'm not even going to try to read it. I can see a little bit there's, you know, to keep the venom and malignity of the disease from the heart. So there's something about diseases of the heart, which seems to go fairly well with the this poem and what it's doing, what's playing around the page. Actually, I think it would be fun to see this as part of a series um, to see how the poems interacted and played off of each other, um, where this venom comes out, how it has to do with the pestilential conditions, what the heart has to do with all of this. So interesting poem. Like I said, I'd like to see it in a series. Callie Ingram, I don't really know anything about her. Is there anything down here? She is a PhD candidate at the University of Buffalo. That's all we get. And, there, and there's different different versions of this um, down the page. Some, and they all have the, like, the re reworded poem-like version under it, which I don't know that I really even really want that, but we have these emergent occasions um, coming out in these other ones, but I'm not going to read those. I just want to read the first one.